Please join me in welcoming today's speaker, Anish Bhimani. Thanks, Dina. Uh, I also want to acknowledge my good friends Joyce Procaglia and Tara Darbyshire and recognize the impact of their contributions to the field of information security, both through the tremendous work of the Archer Foundation and the Executive Women's Forum. Thanks very much. I'm thrilled, honored, and a little humbled uh, to be here today. It's been 20 years since I graduated from INI, and the program today has grown so much and so dramatically, it's almost unrecognizable from the program I went through as a member of the class of uh, MSO3. Back then, just to give you an idea, we had 45 students, 39 of whom worked for the same company. We had one international student, two if you count Puerto Rico. There was only one degree program, the MSIM, and we all went to school in Pittsburgh. Now, I understand 114 students from 14 countries, multiple campuses, multiple degree programs, and the INI has evolved into the preeminent institute of its kind. Congratulations to Dina, to Marvin, and to everybody involved in the program. You should be very proud of what you've built. To all the graduates, I want to encourage each of you to make the most of the interdisciplinary education you've received. Technology now pervades everything we do in industry, and the skills you've learned are portable to nearly every type of company in the world. When I graduated college, I was an electrical engineering major. I was going to go design circuits for a living, which was then actually the 486, just to give you an idea of what that looks like. That was a chip made by Intel back in the day. And I thought I'd design circuits for a living. The day I got back from INI, I was working at a company called Belcor. My group dissolved, and I was placed into a security group doing research and consulting on new technologies for the phone company. Spent 10 years in technology consulting to the telecoms. I also spent time as CTO of a publicly traded internet company, a specialized security consultant, and a management consultant before joining the bank 10 years ago. Each of those roles challenged me in different ways and taught me unique skills and capabilities. If, if you would have told me 20 years ago that I'd be working in financial services at a large global bank, I would have said you were nuts. I was an engineer. I was going to invent the next big thing. However, if you look at most banks and most large companies in general, they're really technology companies at heart. In fact, I get more exposure to cutting edge technology at a 300,000 person global bank than I ever did at a small startup or technology consulting firm. And my point is that you should always keep an open mind with regard to your career. Opportunities come in lots of forms, and you don't want to limit yourself by not considering the breadth of options open to you. What I thought I'd do today in the time we have is share with you a number of lessons that I've learned over the years in those roles uh, that I wish somebody had told me 20 years ago. So here they are. Number one, take charge of your own career. Don't wait for somebody else to take care of you or to define your job for you. Have goals in mind. Be specific, but at the same time, don't get so set in your ways. I'm always amazed when I talk to people recently out of school that say, well, in five years, I want to do this. In 10 years, I want to do this. Then I'm going to be vice president. In 20 years, I want to do this. 20 years? I don't know what I'm doing 20 days from now. Your career never goes exactly the way you planned it. Your life never moves in a straight line. It goes up, goes sideways, occasionally goes down. You have to recover from that. So two things I encourage you to remember. Number one is don't define yourself too narrowly. You are not a database security expert, you're a security expert. You're not a security expert, you're a technologist. You're not a technologist, you're a professional. And the broader you do, the more doors will be open to you. And number two is, yes, get on the rocket ship, but don't always be in such, in a, hurry, in such a hurry to get on the next rocket ship. The best way to get your next job is to do your current job really, really well. Do well and people will seek you out for other opportunities. I always tell people to answer four questions. Do you like what you do? Are you challenged by it? Does it get you, you get excited to go to work every day? Number two, do you like the people you work with? Because life is way too short to work with people you don't like. Do I work for somebody that I can learn from and that I respect? And am I adequately recognized for what I do? Whatever that means to you. If you can answer yes to all four of those questions, you're in great shape. Number two, build a network. In the era of LinkedIn and Facebook, it's really inexcusable not to. The stronger your network, the more doors will be open to you. Every person you meet, is an opening to a new potential job. However, you have to work at it. For the love of God, don't wait until you need people to reach out to them. Work at this every day. Now, at the same time, there's a fine line between meeting people, schmoozing, and just sucking up. Don't judge people by their titles. Often the most effective and influential people are often lower in the hierarchy. Think about social networking and the whole premise behind it, right? 
I always say, that whenever I get a phone call from somebody who introduces themselves as a managing director of such and such, I'm like, this guy doesn't know what he's talking about, right? Because the more people feel like they need to use their title, the less power they actually have. To that point, treat everyone with respect, from the CEO all the way down to the first line employees, not to mention the admins who actually run the place. People can smell suck ups a mile away. You can't fake authenticity. Number three, always keep the big picture in mind. How does what you're doing fit into the broader goals of your organization. It's very easy to get caught up in your own little world and get complacent. As you begin your career, you'll undoubtedly see things that just don't make sense to you. Hey, why do we do that? Why do we do it? It'd be much better. I could write a script to do this. You wouldn't have to do it manually. Over time, you're going to stop doing that. Fight that urge as much as you can. We've all dealt with functionaries before. You stood in the wrong line. You filled out the red form instead of the blue form. Nobody sets out wanting to be that guy. It just happens to you. Fight that urge as much as you can. Never stop looking for ways to improve things in any way you can. Number four, keep your emotions in check. Uh, it's very tempting, especially when you can live tweet literally anything, to lash out quickly. One of the smartest things I ever learned um, was I keep a, a folder in email for people that still use email. I, I keep a folder in email that I call my pissed off folder. And I write an email, whenever I'm upset about something, I write it, I file it away. And if I still feel the same way 24 hours later, then I send the email. And I can't count you how many times that has saved me because I've never sent an email from my pissed off folder. The internet is written in ink, not in pencil. A lot of those things are hard to take back. Number five, focus on execution above all else. Make decisions based on the best available facts. A fabulous plan poorly executed never beats an okay plan that's executed flawlessly. Uh, there's a gentleman named Ed Miller, who was the CEO of AXA Financial, who said that 90% of vision is execution, 90% of execution is communication. There's a, my wife comes from a family of a number of teachers, and there's an old adage in teachers talking about, um, well, hey, so what did you do yesterday? Oh, I spent the afternoon teaching my dog to talk. Your dog can talk? No, I didn't say he could talk. I just said I spent the afternoon teaching him to talk. And that's an example of what you want to talk about. Look for results, not activity. Every executive will get a report saying, here's all the things we did. It's what I call my, what I did on my summer vacation report. You didn't actually get anything done, but you did a lot in doing it. Along those lines, you always want to be a hero on delivery, not on commitment. Right? I'll take the person who says they're going to have things, something done on Saturday and gets it done on Thursday all day long over the person who says they'll have something done on Tuesday and doesn't get it done until Wednesday. Number six, this sounds trite, um, but you know, as Dina said, make sure you find the right balance in your life. For all of the noise about companies providing work-life balance, it's an extremely personal thing, and you're the only person can find that, find that right balance for you. Again, for the love of God, take all your vacation. Work will still be here when you get back. You think you can't afford the time away, but you can. Because if you can't, you've got a different problem, because you'll never be able to do anything else in your entire life. At the same time, don't define yourself exclusively by your job. A job is a big part of who you are, but it doesn't exclusively define you as a person. You're a spouse, you're a parent, you're a child, you're a friend. If you define yourself exclusively by your job, it's going to come back to bite you. I mentioned uh, before that I was CTO of an internet startup. The market was good, things were great. You know, we went on a road show, we were doing great, we went public, lots of stock options, then the bottom fell out of the market, and I was fired from a company that I built from the ground up. I went home that day, you know what? My wife didn't love me any less, my kids didn't hug me any less. Pick yourself up, dust yourself off, and move on. That turned out to be Probably the most defining event in my career, but probably the best thing that ever happened to me. I actually called Joyce, uh, who got me my next job. Just as a commercial for Joyce. Um, uh, and then ended up, and things have worked out pretty well. Last but not least, never stop earning your job. Watch out for that entitlement mentality. Nothing's worse than people who, someone who's made it and thinks they're too big to do any real work, or that nobody else could possibly do what I can. People talk a lot at some point about not wanting to get too into the weeds. And again, let me tell you something. The best executives in the world have a tremendous attention of detail, have the ability to dive way down into the detail, come back up and see the big picture. Andy Grove said that only, only the paranoid survive. And we were talking the other day, Microsoft is run by people in their 40s who are scared to death of Google, 
which is run by people in their 30s, who are scared to death of Facebook, which is run by people in their 20s, who are scared to death by the next VC-funded company on Sand Hill Road, which is run by high school, who are scared to death of Nick and Bella, by the way. <laughs> and let me close with a call to each of you. Today, you're receiving a graduate degree from one of the finest programs at one of the most preeminent universities in the world. Don't sit back and feel like your education is over. Your formal education may be ending, but your lifelong education is just beginning. Never stop learning and read everything you can get your hands on. I graduated 20 years ago. We didn't have cell phones, let alone smartphones. Java hadn't been invented yet. The World Wide Web didn't exist. We knew what the internet was, but we couldn't talk to anybody because nobody else did. You'll find that the specifics of what you learn in school will rapidly become obsolete, but the basic knowledge of how to learn new topics and how to communicate them to others will serve you incredibly well in your career. With that, I'd like to congratulate you all on your achievement today and wish you well as you embark on what I'm sure will be very successful careers. Thank you.